Hey guys, today we are looking at a German Stahlhelm, uh, model 1916, so World War I vintage. This is a pretty standard one, nothing exciting about it. Uh, you'll see a lot of them in a lot of collections. And uh, these were used obviously all through World War I and then in the interwar period and even into World War II. In the early World War II footage, you will see German soldiers wearing these. And of course you can tell the, the early 1916 models because of these rivets that stick out there. Um, the later ones, the M35, the M40, M42 did not have those. What makes this one interesting is that it was used in the interwar period by the German Free Corps. Who were the Free Corps? Well, when the Treaty of Versailles was signed, the German military was demobilized and you had hundreds of thousands of out of work, unemployed German soldiers with nothing to do. So what do a whole bunch of underpaid, out of work board guys do they get together they drink in the, in the beer halls and they talk politics and they join up in paramilitary organizations and cause trouble and that's what the free corps did the free corps liked to fight with the communists there's all kinds of stories of violence that they did and all kinds of shenanigans where a lot of people were hurt and sometimes even killed they use this insignia on a lot of their equipment. I've seen it on tanks, I've seen it on uniforms, I've seen it on certainly helmets like this, which is the skull and crossbones. And in this case, the crossbones are a cross pair of potato masher grenades. Now, there's gonna be a lot of variant in the style that you'll see of this skull and crossbones because they were hand painted most of the time and kind of depends on the artist whoever did this one i'd say is kind of mediocre but you can tell it's definitely been there for the since the period of use it's got the same amount of rust that the rest of the helmet has a lot of wear in there but still a very nice example um, i've certainly seen weapons that are branded with free core symbols I've seen holsters, all kinds of stuff. And maybe in a later video, we will look at some of the weapons that actually have Free Corps insignia on them. They even had their own ranks, they had their own decorations, they had all kinds of stuff. It a very German organized military bearing about them, even though they were quite the troublemaker sometimes. And also, without getting into the political aspect of it, they were very involved in the early formation of the Nazi party. So this is just, the, like I said, the standard German 1916 helmet. And it's got a hand-painted shield on the side here, which is where the German colors would go. Now my research leads me to believe that this is either for Bremen or Thuringia. If you know, if you have a better idea, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. So leave a comment. And if you have a free core helmet, I'd love to hear about it as well. Uh, nothing super special inside this one. This is just the standard original factory paint job, the, the German sort of greenish gray with its original liner in there. You've got your three cushions and each one has two tongues. This one has the original at least it looks like the original uh, little string up here, which tightens them and loosens them. The leather is in pretty good shape, or I could use a little bit of treatment before it dries out too much. Uh, this does not have the chin strap, but here's the rivets where the chin strap would go. So if you find a chin strap, it's pretty easy to put that on there. Um, otherwise, it's just a good example of a used helmet definitely used in the interwar period for god only knows what people were doing while wearing this but uh just something that uh, i thought you'd enjoy seeing and we'll be trying to put up other interesting things in the coming days and weeks if you enjoy stuff like this like and subscribe and we'll be getting to it as soon as we can thanks for watching